Today in this video we see an introduction about finite state machine or finite automata. In some of the textbooks, the finite state machines can be called as finite automata also. It is an abstract or a theoretical machine. It's a machine design which exists only on the paper. We are going to understand this finite state machine in two perspectives today. One is block diagram and the other one is a mathematical model. Now let us see the block diagram. The block diagram contains three components. The very first component is finite control. The second component is input tape. The finite control is communicating with the input tape via the redirect head. So first let us see what is a finite control. Or what is the purpose of the finite control? This finite control can be in any state at a time. For example, it can be in Q1. After some time, it can change the state to Q2. After some time, it can change the state to Q3. It depends upon the input symbol what it reads. And this finite control is equivalent to today's CPU, which is housing or which contains the logic or you can understand it as some program which can be kept inside this finite control based on the logic based on the program this finite control reads the input from the input tape one by one and accordingly it responds and it may change its state now let us see what is this input tape this input tape is infinite in size it is divided into many cells each cell is able to hold only one symbol at a time. Read write head. This read write head performs only the read operation and it can read the contents of the input tape only from left to right but not in reverse. And it is able to read the symbol only one at a time. So this is the mathematical model of a finite state machine. Whenever we need to design a finite state machine, we must be able to design or imagine this mathematical model in our mind. Now let us see the mathematical equation or the formula with which we are further explaining this finite state machine. So now let us see the mathematical model of finite state machine or finite automata. This finite state machine is of two types. One is deterministic finite state machine. The other one is non-deterministic finite state machine. Here I have written DFSM is deterministic finite state machine. If it is NFSM, just we need to add the append the word a non-deterministic finite state machine. Now, in general, finite state machine is defined with phi tuples or phi information or it is otherwise called a squintuple information. This is the phi tuple. First information is K, Sigma, Delta, S, A. S is written in lower case. A is written in caps. What is this K? It is nothing but a set of states. Already we know that finite control can change its state at any time. So that is indicated by this K. Sigma is the set of input alphabet or input symbols. Del is a transition function. S is the start state. And the start state is always only one for a machine. And the start state belongs to this K. The start state is a member of this set. A is the set of accepting states. It means there is more than one accepting state. A is the subset of K. So with this phi information, we are able to define the finite state machine mathematically. Del is a transition function which is the heart of any automata, not only the finite state machine. With respect to this transition only, transition function, sorry, we can define what is pushdown automata, what is Turing machine, what is linear bounded automata, etc. Now, with the help of the same transition function, we are going to understand what is DFSM and what is NFSM. I have given the notation or the transition function here as del d. Del d means it is a transition function of DFSM. Del n means transition function of NFSM. Now look into this. K cross sigma on the right hand side it is given as K. The meaning of this transition function is we know K is state. Sigma is set of input alphabet. 
I'll just explain this transition function with the help of this black diagram. From the given state, the finite state machine, from its given state, it may read any symbol from the input tape. After reading the input symbol from the input tape, it may or may not change its state. This is the transition function of DSPSM. Let me repeat once again. From the given state, the finite state machine, on reading the input symbol from the read-write head, it may or may not change its state. This is in case of DFSM. Now let us see what is NFSM. In case of NFSM, again, from the given state, the non-deterministic finite state machine reads some input from the input tape, that is sigma. Sometimes it may read epsilon also. Epsilon or in automata theory, we call it as empty string. It may read input alphabet from the input tape or sometimes it may read epsilon. It may or may not change its state, but it may end up in more than one state. So I have explained this further with an example. With respect to DFSM, from the state Q0 on reading A, the state is changed to Q1. This is an example transition for DFSM. An example transition for NFSM is also given here. From the state Q1 on reading A, it goes to Q0 as well as Q1. This is an example for NFSM. It means in case of DFSM, we are defining the transition on an input symbol only once. But in case of NFSM, from the given state, we are defining the transition on the input symbol A more than once. That is why it goes to Q0 as well as it goes to Q1. In the next video, we see a better example with DFSM and NFSM. Thank you. Please share and subscribe my video.